Scott over at The Versatile Guitarist. In this lesson, I want to show you some awesome actual scale runs from some famous flamenco guitarists to get us working on an awesome technique called piccolo. Okay, so what is piccolo? This is a technique that we use when we have single notes, usually in close proximity. Generally speaking, it's going to be index and middle rest strokes, and that's what sets it apart from other techniques. I mean, you can play a scale run with free strokes. You certainly can. Sometimes we have to, especially when the thumb's being used. But we want to get used to this technique, and it really helps our melodies kind of pop out especially when those melodies have to compete against the volume of chords and things like that. So it's a very Spanish guitar, very flamenco thing to be doing. So before we get started here, let's just do a couple of exercises where we're gonna play index rest stroke on the first string. Rest stroke means we rest our finger on the next string. So don't finish or complete the motion until you are actually into and touching and displacing the next string. We wanna kinda of go through the string into the next string. Middle finger, and we'll go back and forth. Easy enough so far. You see some people sometimes lifting their pinky up way out here, and that kind of helps bend this finger so that these two fingers, which are of different lengths, like the middle finger is so much longer than the index, it kind of evens the playing field out a little bit. So sometimes Picado will play it kind of like this, more curved at this finger, a little straighter on that one. Um, but they don't have to be curved. In fact, we can actually let them go backwards like this. There's kind of two ways of doing Picado. We can let them flop back like that, or we can be more rigid here at the tip. That requires our nails to be a little bit shorter so we don't get hung on the nail, but it gives us a more aggressive attack, I think. Paco de Lucia would do that, like all the knuckles are kind of stiff there, all moving. So Bikas, who we're gonna talk about in a minute, kind of flopped them back like that. Two ways of doing it, whatever's comfortable for you. Good to do them both ways, depending on the situation. Okay, here's another exercise for crossing strings, which is quite a problem on guitar, even if you're playing with a pick. We're gonna go three notes, three notes, three notes, three notes, so. to make sure you're always alternating. And that's what we want to do 99.9% .9 of the time with Picado is alternate, strict alternation of the index and middle fingers. Try not to double up when you cross strings. So I'm going index, middle, index, middle, index, middle. I am, I am, I am. So this exercise really only benefits our fingers when we go to the ceiling. If I go to the floor, watch this. Index, middle, index. Well, the problem, see how my index finger is on this string? I'm going to the floor though, so it actually um, doesn't address the problem of string crossing and keeping strict alternation when we go to the floor. So this exercise is just to the ceiling. Make sure you're always playing the opposite finger. In Picado, we start with the index finger quite often. It's a more dominant finger, but we want to be able to start with our middle finger. So always any Picado exercise that you ever do, Start with the index and then do it again, or several times, with the middle finger as well. So this time we're starting with the middle. M, I, M, I, M, I, M, I, M. Okay, two more things to talk about real quick with Picado. This is a great exercise. I do this every day of my life. Great for coordination. We're only as fast as the left hand, right? We could sit here all day and practice getting really fast at Picado in the right hand, but if our left hand can't keep up, then it's absolutely pointless. So we definitely have to work with both hands, obviously, right? One final thing, make sure, or really try to kill the string with the next finger. That's called planting, and that's the key to playing fast. So if you see how quickly I'm doing this, the note is lasting very, very short. So immediately getting silenced, and that shortness of the note tells us how fast my finger moved, right? So. We could actually wait a long time between each of these strokes and we're still developing speed by doing that, which seems uh, paradoxical, but that's actually what's happening. So if you silence it, especially when we're on one string, you can kind of tell if you're getting there ahead of time and preparing, and that is the key to speed. Okay, so the first Picado run we're gonna do, first scale run is coming from a Solea example by Juan Serrano, and it's gonna be all triplets. I'm gonna run through it nice and slow and then talk about the problems and some of the trickiness in there. Watch this, these are all triplets. Okay, that's in a group of 12 beats, which is how solea is counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we break the triplet pattern at the end. That's called a remate at the end there, where we do this very um, common and repeated phrase. 
that's not part of the thing, but we wanna make it complete, right? There's a few things here that can trip us up, and that's why I'm including it in this lesson. It's a great practice. We're moving to the left, even though I'm going this way. With these fingers, we're going to the left, and our left hand, my left hand, hates that, right? Going this way is so much harder than going this way, because I, I think it's because this direction, we're leading with our stronger, more efficient, more dominant fingers. But when we go this way, we're having to lead with fingers that are short, like in the case of the pinky, a shorter finger and a finger with much less dexterity. We're only as strong as our weakest link, right? So we have to work more on the pinky, but the pinky will always be weaker, right? So this direction sucks. That's why we gotta do more of it, right? So as I went up the neck here, I continually had to go in the leftward direction. Up here, we even added a finger. It's a good thing to practice here go to the next string, so that's one challenge. Another one is when we get to the end of this phrase, we immediately have to play that thumb, so the thumb has to be ready. That's one of the reasons why this is such a great exercise. You, your thumb has to, if it's here, uh, touching the wood and the string, that's our default kind of Spanish guitar position. Along the way here, during the last few notes of that phrase, our thumb might have to kind of slip down a little bit so it's ready to, to do that. We don't want to pause, we don't want to go and then play that. Our thumb has to be ready. And then go into that arpeggio thing. So that is very tricky. You could also practice it this way. Watch this, talk more about this also later. These are three notes, three again, and then three notes here, then two notes here, and then right to our thumb, right? So that's six notes, three notes, and two notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, one, like that. So that's a practice I like to do sometimes if I notice a regular kind of pattern in the left hand, get rid of the left hand and then just do it here just to map out what's happening in the right hand. So it's uh, six notes here, two goose with three. So I'm counting to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then on the string, count to three. There's only three notes. One, two, three. And here's only two, but we have to alternate, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Index is gonna start the next one. One, two, three. But the middle finger is gonna start the next one, right? Even though this finger's already down, already on that string, it really breaks our momentum if we slip over the string. That's called a slip finger piccolo if we do that. And that is a, a thing that, that we can do in certain cases. But here, the, the real purpose of the practice is to switch. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, one, two, one. Right, and that gets us working on what's happening in the right hand. And then we plug these guys in. Now, these are all triplets, okay, and it's starting on the beat. Thankfully, it's not something too weird, so it's going triplet, triplet, trip. That's the beat right there, the open string. But what happens when we have groups of three, like this is a group of three, here, there, and there, right? Um, without even thinking about it, our body and our fingers and our mind kind of perceive this as the beginning or the downbeat, as where the accent should be, but it's not where the accent is. When you play this, you're very likely to make this mistake and make it sound like this but that's not where the beat is. We're going, the beat is the open string. So make sure you keep that in mind. And so you really should be tapping your foot to this, going one triplet, two triplet, three. There it is. There's another beat. So really maybe accenting that open string, hitting it harder and making a point of that would help you do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. exercise for piccolo technique. Okay, when it comes to piccolo technique, the undisputed champion of speed for piccolo is absolutely Paco de Lucia. Insanely fast. His piccolo is so awesome. It's so clean. You can really almost hear, even though he's going incredibly fast, those little silences between every note that he plays in a fast scale run because he's doing the planting thing, right? Whether he is intentionally doing that or not, he's just so fast that you have to get there a little bit ahead of time. You always have to be one step ahead of yourself in the right hand and the left hand. This phrase that we're gonna do here, we could pick a million of them from him, but this one is, I think, a little more manageable than a lot of his other insane phrases. This is coming from Enter Los Aguas, the B section, where he goes like this. Okay, so this phrase is in the key of E minor. We're going to a D over F sharp chord at the end of it, and then we go to an E minor chord or E minor over G, if you like. And that's a little bit trickier, so you don't have to do that when you come to this. Another uh, thing that's happening here, he's doing a downstroke with a thumb and a golf bay at the same time, right? So these 
Picado exercises that I'm giving you, it's not just Picado. To make the phrase kind of, to round out the phrase, there's another technique. So in the last one, it was an arpeggio there, or that romate. And here we're going to be landing on a chord. And in the next one, we'll also see similar kind of things. And it makes it sound more complete that way, and kind of more of an interesting song snippet that way, I think. So this is in the key of E minor, and our notes are these. He's just going right up and down the scale. But we have to do a position shift to do this. So I think a good exercise for this would be to just go up and down this phrase and never end it. Always alternate. Right, we're using the open string. That's really our ticket to our position shift. So we're playing B, C, D, and then right here on the open string, That's at that instant is when you should be moving up one fret position. E, F sharp, G, A, come back. And then on the open E here, same idea. Shoot back one fret and then keep going. on this note. So it's happening actually on the and. So this is all 16th notes and it begins on the and of one. We go one and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one and two, three, four. That's two measures right there. This phrase, I mean, it, there's so many things in uh, Spanish guitar that use almost this exact same thing. So this is like a an all-purpose kind of deal. Think about it for improvising too. That's a nice little run. It's just a scale going up and down. Okay, the next one's gonna be a little bit trickier. He's gonna go. It started the same way, but now we go. So it ends differently, it goes to a D sharp note. We ended up here in the second position, just like before, but we're gonna stay here now, we go. So this presents a little bit of a string crossing issue as well. We have a D sharp, open E, then jump up to G, F sharp, landing on E. Any piccolo phrase that you work on, you should really kind of do a little tiny snippet of it and just repeat that and then just start adding and adding and adding to it. So, for example, you could go like this. Try to get it nice and clean and fast. Add the next string. That's the problem, that, that crossing of strings. Index, middle, index, middle. Okay, add a note. Add another note. Okay, I should be changing position though, right? Because we need to. There's the next one, okay? And then go to E minor, either this way, or add this in, makes it a little bit more interesting. That way the chords went like this. But E minor works just fine. So the whole phrase is one, Great piccolo phrase and one you should memorize from the great Paco de Lucia. This next piccolo phrase comes from the great Sabicas. He's a more traditional player, obviously. Some really cool stuff though, and some great opportunities for us to work on our technique. In fact, what we're gonna do right now is coming from a great feruca from him called Punta y Tacón. This is coming from the middle of that Sabicas feruca, and we have a really long phrase here that's pretty tricky, and it's got all kinds of string crossing problems, and that's what makes it such a great piccolo study. But it's gonna start out like this. <laughs> A lot of chromaticism. Then it goes to a little arpeggio on an A chord. Then we do this. So it's piccolo mixed with arpeggio, but the real thing, the real meat of this is happening here. Let's jump into this. This is the pretty characteristic of Faruka type of phrase. You see this a lot. And then from the A minor chord, but here he's gonna work in a lot of chromatic notes. That allows us to use our pinky, which we definitely need practice with. We're gonna start with a backwards motion after this initial note. So we're playing the second fret here of the third string, then go back, then come back again to the first note, then cross strings, go to the next string, play the first fret, but then go open again, and then from here, chromatic. One, two, three, four. So far we have. Now after this D sharp note, we go open, first fret, third fret, first fret again, open, and then back to here. And we're gonna wait there. There's the end of the phrase. 
go to an A minor chord, we do a double arpeggio. That means thumb, index, middle, ring, middle, index, and then thumb up with the index or the middle, and then go thumb again, and then up with whatever finger on a single string. So what's super tricky about this, I mean, this is hard enough to go. Definitely, but then to jump immediately into this arpeggio, really difficult for me, I just kind of mixing techniques. And that's where things get really fun is playing not just one technique for an entire song, but the mixing of techniques is really what makes things come alive and makes a solo guitar playing fun. Okay, here we're gonna go up to the fifth fret with a pinky. And this is kind of easy because they're just eighth notes rather than the 16th notes we began with. And he goes, but he kills them. There's staccato dots over those notes. That means kill it, and that can be achieved by doing our planting. And then we're gonna go down one fret, but here we do a hammer on and a pull off very quick. And then the open string, third fret here, second fret. So we have. Interesting thing here, this is the next note. We just played it, but we need to use our pinky because we are going to build this chord, a half diminished chord, B half diminished or B minor seven flat five. It's kind of another way of thinking of a D minor chord, a D minor six to be exact. Same chord, almost a jazzy chord that you wouldn't expect in traditional flamenco, but coming from here. Pinky, and then immediately we start this downward arpeggio. So that's, um, uh, that mixing those together, like I was saying, is really great practice. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and one more beat left in this measure, just go down and up. Okay, here's where the rubber meets the road on this crazy um, run here. say out of everything I'm showing you here today, this is is the hardest. It took me a long time to memorize this and to get it down because there's so much backtracking of notes um, and then just different number of notes per string. But at the same time, I would say if you had to choose one of the three that I'm showing you, it should be this one because we're really getting a lot of practice out of it. And it should be this part starting here. Three, two, three, then the next string open to, to the floor. And then we go to the first fret, then we hop down. So earlier we went like this. Right, open, first fret, and then open again. This time we're going open, first fret, and then jumping down. So there's just a whole grab bag of wackiness here. That's not a weird, that's not such a weird phrase there, right? Here we go. Okay, so that's an entire measure of 16th notes, going a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So just that would be, maybe that's today, that's what you get down. Let's look at tomorrow. Okay, this phrase is very similar to the, the one that we did at the very beginning of this falsetta. Okay, that's the whole measure. Starts on an A, G sharp, that's evoking the harmonic minor scale, but everything else is so much uh, chromaticism happening. Open, first fret, open again, very similar to earlier, right? One, two, three, four, go to the next string, and then make sure you're alternating. When I stop to talk about stuff, I might start with the index rather than the middle, right? So we wanna be able to start with the middle and strictly alternate or the index. Um, right now I should be on playing this D sharp note with my middle finger, which sucks, right? This would be way easier to do it that way. But we're gonna use middle finger and then index in the middle again because of where we started and we just have to continue the alternation. See, that was the middle finger index middle and we go to the first string open one two three okay so we're almost out of the woods there's only one measure to go but um, let's repeat that again okay here's the end of it and then we're going to go into an a minor chord and just do whatever you want here i do that i think he went up with the thumb and then uh like that it doesn't matter what you do there any raw scale will do. So it's really tough to get that fast. We're going all the way down these strings. But what's happening in that last measure is interesting. He goes like this. Notice if there's anything, a pattern here. What he's doing is he's playing three notes on this string. The downbeat is right here. 
and then four notes on the string. So it's two, one, zero, three, two, one, zero. Then he does the same thing again. Three notes on the string, two, one, zero. On the next string, same as the one previous, three, two, one, zero. So think of it that way. Let's get rid of the left hand like we did in the Juan Serrano thing and, and play three notes here, four notes, three notes, four notes. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Now do it starting with your middle finger. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Anytime that you have an odd number of strokes on one string, it's gonna make for an awkward transition as you cross to the next string, and it's gonna tempt you to play the same string twice. That's why we really have to work on that. And that was the purpose of this exercise at the beginning. Triple it, triple it. To get you conscious of the fact that your finger is here and you're gonna to wanna to use it, but it's gotta be the one that you didn't just use in the interest of alternating, okay? So again. When we get to the end, he's back to three notes, but he knows he needs to harmonically make this logical, right? So he didn't continue the chromaticism, he went the A minor scale at the end, right? Everything else is just chromatic. Let's look at the whole long part one more time. Here's really where this ending part begins. I know we played a few notes already on that string, but think of it starting on this F sharp and then down. So that is a great long piccolo falsetta from Punta e Tacón, an awesome feruca by the great Sabicas. So there's no end to the exercises we could do with piccolo. It's such an awesome technique, and there's a million examples from famous flamenco songs, but also just playing scales up and down the neck, which you should be doing anyway, I think, um, is a great way to practice um, this technique, because that's generally the technique that we use when we're improvising. So you can come up with all kinds of little exercises, playing a scale with different scale patterns. And you'll see those creeping up now and then in actual flamenco songs, like in the Tarantas by Paco de Lucia, one phrase he ends, he goes like this. It's just a scale phrase, a scale, a logical thirds type scale pattern. And that's the kind of thing that will creep into your playing when you practice that way and you improvise, and it's just gonna make you faster. If you wanna learn more about Picado, I do a more deep dive on this technique in this video right here.